Hey there, friend, and welcome back. I'm your friendly neighborhood quantum rebel, Sarah Rusk, and a year ago today, I went on my very first Joe Dispenza advanced retreat to Marco Island, Florida, and it was amazing and life-changing, to say the least. I'm gonna keep this as succinct as possible. I've tried recording this video like 10 times already. So, we're gonna try this again. So, brief backstory. Uh, last year, and it was the 2022, the beginning of January, my life was like, eh, things were starting to fall apart and I really had no idea who I was. I was very much so a people pleaser and I felt like I was giving my power away constantly to people. And before I left for Marco Island, I posted a video. So if you go way, 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 way back in my archives, you'll see pre-Marco Island and then you'll see post-Marco Island, all my thoughts and everything after my first event and retreat. This video is just going to be kind of like a, a recap of what happened this year and some of the aha moments I had and what it is that I'm kind of working with now a full year later. And just as the thumbnail suggests, I'm sorry that it's kind of clickbaity, but I had to get your attention somehow. I did quit two main sources of income. I did become debt free and I did fall in love. So stay tuned throughout this video and I will tell you everything about all that. So this notebook, I wrote all of my notes and stuff. Oh my goodness. All oh, my pictures. Oh my goodness. I haven't, I haven't taken this notebook out since, uh, since Marco Island the second time I went to an AFU and I was also a Healy, which I'll talk a little bit about that too. And I've got pictures in here of my animals. That's so funny that I left them in there. Um, before I left for Marco Island, I wrote out a list of what I want to change and things that I wanted to create. I had just started this channel in October of 2021 and I was really working on trying to make this full time so that way then I could potentially in the summer of 2022 quit one of my jobs. Before leaving for Marco Island and for this uh, advanced retreat as well, there was another job that when I got back I was either going to ask for a raise or outright quit because it just was not serving me anymore. And going to this retreat was kind of like the fuel that I needed to kind of stand up for myself. So this is where past Sarah was a year ago. What I want to change. Limiting beliefs around money. Did that. Limiting beliefs around self-esteem. Did that. Limiting beliefs around my abilities, like my healing abilities and everything. Did that. Not feeling powerful. Not feeling empowered. Not feeling strong around others. Feeling stupid. Uh, needing things to be perfect. Relying on others' opinions too much. To think for myself and believe it open my mind, to stop feeling so small, to let go and allow when setting intentions, release traumas around a particular person, release relationship trauma, figure out what this block is. I had just like a weird block of not understanding things. It's still there sometimes, but I kind of understand it a little bit more now. Figure out who else is in here with me. Sometimes I feel like I'm not the only one occupying my body. Find out why I get powerless. Stop feeling so small. Feel grown and sexy, go past Sarah. Stop feeling like I have no control. This unworthy, not good enough feeling to get rid of this apathetic feeling. So what you can hear is my past self felt very disempowered, was very confused and lost and tend to give her power away to other people, lots of self-esteem issues, and lots of matter trying to change matter stuff. And I will tell you that pretty much all of this got tackled while I went through everything last year. And this is the stuff that I want to create. I wanted to create a dream body, bulletproof mind, earn money easily or acquire it easily, be the person I've always wanted to be, feel powerful, be more creative, show up better in my relationships, more healthy relationships, to create the real me, feel empowered, there's that empowerment again. 2020 vision, abs, <laughs> healed hip. I had issues with my right hip. Um, it kept like hurting pretty badly and it turns out I was just overworked <laughs> and needed a break. Money out of thin air, the relationship of my dreams, to get the image in my head to match outside and there is a horse that I am working on manifesting um, to have that opportunity come up, which that opportunity is now here, and um, I have to figure out how to manifest $10,000, so yeah, <laughs> we'll get there. She's going to be my biggest manifest story, manifestation story to date. <laughs> so like I said, if you want to know more about my trip to Marco Island, I posted another video about it. I had 
an out-of-body experience. I had that freight train feeling where it felt like, you know, energy was shooting up from my legs all the way up to my body. Went into paralysis. I had to drop to the floor. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> there was a story going around that I was the girl that fell off her chair because I had a mark on my lip. That wasn't true. I had a fever blister <laughs> that I got before the trip because I stressed myself out because COVID was still in, very much so in full swing. Um, I got COVID after as well. It's actually um, the Dispensa Influenza, as they call it. I got my biological upgrade. And then when I got home, it was pretty much like I died. <laughs> A very, very, very figurative death. The old me was dying while I was sick with this virus and letting everything just purge itself out. And when I got back home, I had a few moments at the job that I was at where things just weren't going into place anymore. Things did not feel good. The integration process from coming back from my first retreat was hell. It was awful, but it was also awful for me because I was coming back to things that needed to change. I could have sucked it up and held out there and felt disempowered, but that would not have served me and those lessons would have kept coming up. One of the biggest things that I have learned from doing all of this work is if you have patterns that keep coming up, it's because there's a lesson that you aren't quite getting. I have had the same situation in job form and in relationship form come up a few times this year and it took me until literally December, a month ago, to understand these patterns and to finally be able to let them go. However, I was aware that there were patterns that needed to be released. And without going to, you know, the retreat, I don't think I would have been able to have known myself well enough to have done that. And, you know, there's a lot of incredible things that, that happened out of this year. You know, when I got back home, I did quit two jobs. I sent an email to the one person saying, hey, I would like to get paid this much. They told me thank you, but no thank you. And that was the end of that. And cool, done, whatever. And then I wound up leaving my other job just it, I needed to have left there quite some time ago, and this was just the final push that I needed to get out. And I left on 2 22, 22. Me and my horse Abigail moved to a different barn. She is six minutes away. And it's really funny because when I went to Marco Island, and you can hear it in the video that I do pre Marco Island, I say that I really want abundance. For me, abundance was security and it was safety because my entire life I grew up not having. A lot of abundance. I worked really hard, really, really hard for not very much money. And I had it on my goals list for last year to stop making other people's dreams come true and to start making my own dreams come true. So then what did I do? I hustled on YouTube and my horse that was six minutes away, I wasn't able to really enjoy her as much. I was trying to make her into a lesson horse and teach lessons and everything. And when everything was said and done, you know, I have two lesson students at the moment who are very awesome but that path isn't really calling to me at the moment anymore. I have a bunch of other things that I'm looking to start going down, like motivational speaking. So because I decided upon what it is that I wanted to do, which is to be a motivational speaker, I have started to trim back the things that aren't leading me down that path. And I really wouldn't have been able to have taken those steps if I didn't understand and realize that I needed to make room for it energetically. And as I have been making room for it energetically, these awesome opportunities have been coming up for me. Even the way in which I have been showing up to my YouTube videos has been a lot different. And there's been a huge shift within me and there's been a lot of really awesome moving parts and pieces that have come together to kind of help get me into that spot. So being able to quit those jobs at the beginning of last year really opened up the door and the avenue for me to start putting the pieces back together again of my life. I remember all of the, the panic attacks and the anxiety that I had over money and trying to make it and putting money above everything. When I finally started to loosen up a little bit and soften to all of that, that's when other cool things came through. And each time I felt like I was falling, I got supported every single time because I was putting the steps forward, putting plans into motion to help get me to that next level. I got to go to California last year. I have always wanted to go to California, like in the worst way possible. And yet I was able to somehow make it work. I went to three Joe Dispenza retreats without having stable income. Like I didn't know where I was gonna get paid 
next. And yet everything always worked out. When one job ended, something else came through that was even better. When something else ended, another amazing thing would come through that was even better. I just had something end now, and now I'm in the in-between period where I'm waiting for something else to happen. And for what I've learned with this work, that when I'm in the in-between and I give, more times than not, something awesome comes through. And I am not giving from a place of I want something to happen. I'm giving and showing a sign to the universe that I am abundant. I financially can handle this. And hey, I'm I'm abundant. I'm good. Though, <laughs> I literally, there's like a weird jump break in between these two uh, in, in my video because a friend of mine called me and that, that horse that I was, literally in real time, um, the horse that's on my list that I talked about at the beginning of last year that I wrote out that I wanted, um, I got the call today saying that like she really would like to get her going and everything to start, you know, selling her and I've got to put some things in place. However, I need to make $10,000 appear out of nowhere. So I'll let you guys know when that happens. <laughs> it's one of those... It was a heart connection with this horse. I had the opportunity. Actually, there's a, if you want to see what she looks like, um, go back to the video that says uh, an LGBT dating app confirmed the name of my spirit guide. It's actually a really great video. But the horse that's on there that my friend let me use, um, she's going to be putting her up for sale. And I just, I've had this heart connection with this horse. Like, my heart just opened. And I kind of want this horse more than I want air. I love Abigail, but Abigail and this, this horse, her name's Pixie. Um, they look very much so alike, and it's just one of those things. So I don't care if I don't ever have any other horses besides these two for the rest of my life, but it's going to work out somehow. And even if it doesn't, I made it this far. Like, the fact that I'm one of her choices is just really cool. So, again, that's one of the things that came through with all of this. I've let go of needing specific outcomes. The whole debt-free thing that happened for me, I was able to pay off my car. My... I was paying 340 some odd dollars a month for my car and with all of these jobs still coming through while still living on my savings off of my savings while also being able to go to three Joe Dispenza retreats um I was able to pay my $13,000 car payment like I own Ruby now it's my little Honda Civic hatchback I love her I also made her appear in a parking lot like she wasn't in the computer system and we searched the entire parking lot and couldn't find this car and she was just right there. There's another video about that too. That was actually my first video that I actually made besides my little trailer thing. That's also a good story too. Um, so amazing things have been coming through. There have been plenty of upsets. There have been plenty of moments where I'm like, what the hell is going on? So many moments where I just, I wanted to just quit and think like, what's, why is this happening to me? And what's happened with doing the meditations and doing the work, anytime I have these moments, I, I sit and I meditate, I immediately stop my thoughts. I have, this happened to me last night. I was having panic attacks over making videos and, and other stuff, my animals making me crazy, <laughs> worrying about them to make sure that they're healthy and everything. And instead of being up all night and, you know, running my programs, I sat and I threw on Blessing of the Energy Centers and I got myself back into alignment. And this morning I woke up and I meditated and I sat with myself and I just got myself centered and grounded again. And I'm changing the energetic field that's around my body. I learned so much about like us as human beings. Like we are energetic beings. Our, the, where we vibrate is what comes back to us. The closer we are to source, the less we have, you know, bad days, I guess you could say. Bad things can happen, but the less that we react to it. I actually would like to do a video about my theory scientifically behind a bad day. I think I might have figured it out a little bit. And I was trying to get myself back into alignment this morning. And so far, so good. So each person is going to have a different experience at their retreat and also coming home from it. I had a lot of layers that needed to come off and I had a lot that I needed to learn. I am secure within myself this moment sitting here right now. This is the best version of me that I have ever been in. I feel secure, I feel heard, and I feel empowered. And I gave that to myself and I gave it to myself by doing the work, by sitting with me. And it's not, it's, it's not like a big physical thing. It's not some big arduous thing that you need to like slug through and everything. It's only as difficult as you make it and as difficult as it 
it takes to release things. I had a lot to release. I had my dad's baggage and traumas that I needed to release. I had my mom's traumas I needed to release. You know, there was a lot of layers and patterns that had to go. While sitting here right now, I am by no means perfect. I don't have this all figured out. But I'm happy that I can look back from a year ago and say, wow, I've come so far. And now, this whole falling in love thing, I thought I fell in love three times this year, but it wasn't real love. That was attachment. And I put in there that I wanted to, you know, work through these relationship blocks and I figured it out. I figured it out that it was attachment. I got attached to people. And I wound up instead falling in love with myself. And I'm sure there's a handful of you guys rolling your eyes being like, oh my god, big fucking deal. It is a big fucking deal because I'm a big fucking deal, duh. <laughs> when you love yourself, that's when people come out of the woodwork, the people that match your energy because you have a certain of respect and love for you and people can feel it. People can feel when you are genuine and when you are showing up authentically as your, you know, authentic version of yourself. And while I have been authentic throughout my life, this is the most sincere that I feel like I have been, the most connected and grounded within myself that I have ever felt. And I'm still working on really snapping into alignment with my higher self. I get closer and closer every single day. I, the way that I feel closer to source is I feel happier faster. I feel happier faster and Another big takeaway from this year too is when I fall off the bandwagon and things start to feel hectic and scary and I don't know what's going on, I trust. I was terrified of the unknown in the very beginning of this year and now me and the unknown are besties. And speaking of besties, one thing I wanted to mention towards the beginning of the video, and I've completely forgotten, I apologize, is all the amazing people that I met through doing this work. There's people I talk to just about every single day, if not like a couple of times a week, that are really close friends of mine. When I went through the retreat, my first one, I came out with no close connections. There are a couple of people that I met that, you know, they're really awesome, very sweet, but we didn't exchange numbers. And it took the second retreat for me to really have friends. But at that point, I had this channel. I was kind of established and people kind of knew me. So if you go into your retreat and you come out not with a community and not knowing people, not with friends and everything or making connections, that's totally okay. That's, I don't want to say it's normal because there's no such thing as normal. That's what had to happen for you. That was my experience because I was not at a level where I could have been receptive to that kind of energy. I got angry a lot of the times at the retreats. People were saving other people's seats and it was really pissing me off, but it was what it was. And I learned to kind of soften to that within the other two retreats. Now it's like, okay, cool. I don't need to sit there, whatever. I'll go sit over here. It's cool. It's fine. Let that go in love. The other thing too, is you don't have to feel anything. When you do these retreats and you go and you hear all these people having these, you know, grandiose experiences, just showing up is making huge pivotal changes within your life. You know, I had a couple of experiences, like I said, towards the beginning of the video, I had an out-of-body experience, which is nuts. And I had that, you know, energy moving up my body experience as well. And now I wiggle when I meditate. It's fun because I turn into a frequency. <laughs> but it's okay too, if you get frustrated, if you're fidgety, if you don't see anything, you don't feel anything. I have aphantasia. When I shut my eyes, I can't see anything. It's dark. You tell me to visualize an apple, I think of an apple but I can't see it. That's just how I'm wired. If people are talking about their experiences of seeing ancestors, loved ones, beings, and everything, they're flying all around the universe. I had none of that. However, I still had an awesome trip and I still grew a lot from it too. Also, not everybody has to love all the meditations. I hate walking meditations. I feel so stupid when I do them. And that's my own personal thing. And it's really funny because I had an experience with my friend Jen Chase where we did a walking meditation in Marco Island um, during the advanced follow-up. And she felt so good. She's like, I feel like I just took ecstasy. And I'm sitting on the ground pouting. And she's like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, I just feel happy. <laughs> And for some people, that's as much as 
they need to feel. For me, that's as much as I need to feel. I don't have these euphoric, over-the-top sensations because when they happen to me personally, I'm not grounded. And being grounded is also another big takeaway from this year too. Being able to stay grounded within myself and within my body. So I just wanted to give this little yearly update from a year ago when I went to Marco Island. I'm going to do a year from San Diego because that's also another point and then a year from my advanced follow-up in August. But I recommend the retreats wholeheartedly. The community is fantastic. Being able to give life to life is awesome. I got to be a Healy in August. That was really cool. My research number was 4444. It was four fours, which is kind of cool. And there's just been so much more magic in my life. And the two most important things is I am in control of my life because I'm in control of me. And I really love myself and I really mean it for a change. Instead of that whole like, you know, oh yeah, I love myself. No, I love myself. I'm, I'm a really cool person. I'm very proud of past Sarah for fighting so hard to just want the best for me. And here I am feeling as whole as I've ever felt. I can keep getting more whole, but that's part of the journey, right? So friend, I hope this was helpful. I hope this was entertaining and provided some awesome information. Thank you so much, friend, for taking the time to watch this video. On this channel, I share a lot about my own personal stories of transformation, along with some really cool magic and synchronicities that come through my day. And also, I'm constantly reading things and I'm constantly studying things like quantum physics and the nature of reality and self-improvement. And if that sounds appealing to you and you wish to hang out with the other friends on this awesome community that we have, please hit that subscribe button. We would love to have you. No matter what, love yourself and just promise me you'll keep singing. Okay, friend?